Hi guys, I'm Jay Cook, a representative for the company. Some might call it a lethal company, but we all know the truth. We are a perfectly reasonable company that takes care of its employees. We're here to take care of you today by providing you something to take the edge off after 16 days, 57 pieces of scrap, and $3,291 made for the company, of course. Let's get started. Say you've been visiting one of the more deserty moons, one of those arid climates of experimentation, assurance, or offense. You want something to bring the spice back to life after a barren landscape. Well, we've got just the thing for you. We're here to show you how to make a jalapeno margarita. Now we will be following this up with two other drinks, so stick around for that. If you like what the company has to offer, make sure to subscribe and hit that like button, comment down below, ask any questions if you have them. Now, let's get started. You're gonna wanna shake your glass for a margarita is the way that it is. Tequila Blanco, triple sec, a jalapeno. Not one, but two limes. Stay. Simple syrup. And salt. The salt is for the rim. I use a coarse kosher salt just because it sticks around the rim really well. Also, you're going to want some ice. Don't forget the ice. That's very important. Some shaker cups are going to have just a lid to it. Mine has two cups. Let's get started. We're going to start with the tequila. I like to start with the alcohol first. It just feels right. I want to be able to see how much is going in there perfectly, not mixed in with the other ingredients. We're going to do one ounce tequila. You can make it stronger, but we're making a lot of drinks today. So we're going to start with just one. We're going to do the triple sec next. I'm going to do another ounce of that. We're going to do our lime next. Why not? So for the lime, you can cut it into maybe four wedges and squeeze it in there. You can also juice it. I'm going to juice it today just for simplicity's sake. So let's start with the juicer. Can you see that? I hope you can see that. We here at the company like to make sure that you can see everything that we're doing in our videos. Got some lime on me. All right. I got four of these bad boys to do. I like to do it really limey. I'm a big lime fan. I like the sour taste. You can also do this with um, lime juice from a bottle. I prefer to use fresh limes. I think the taste is better from the juice. But a bottle often will last longer than the real limes. And it might also be cheaper for you, depending on your area, the season, things like that. I really need one of those overhead cams, but here at the company, we believe in spending less money. You see, your hard-earned company dollars go a long way to providing transport, uh, which you don't have to pay for your transport. This ship is entirely paid for by the company for you. Count your blessings. You can, of course, use your hard-earned dollars to buy cozy lights and other sort of fun things. Think of a rug, new costumes. I'm gonna put that back in our bar kit. All right, so we've got our tequila, triple sec, and lime in there. We do still need our simple syrup. You can put more simple syrup than I'm going to do. I don't like it too sweet, so I'm going to do half an ounce. Uh, honestly, you can do less. You can do more. I wouldn't do more than an ounce just because it'll start to overwhelm the rest of the drink. Balance your flavors, you know? Boop. Get these bad boys out of here. I have a lot of lime wedges going on now. For the jalapeno, I cut off the tip. There's my jalapeno. I just cut that tip right off. You're gonna put maybe four slices in there. You don't really want it too spicy, but if you love the spice, throw as much in there as you want. And then we're gonna finish it off with just a bunch of ice. Fill that shaker cup. You want it to be nice and chilled. Make sure it's down on there nice and tight. You don't want it escaping on you. One more time. 
Dracula everywhere. It's sticky. All right. I'm going to loosen that bad boy right up. Then uh, we got this guy. Stick that right down in there. We're going to hold off on this for a second. We're going to take our line. Get a nice little wedge going on there. This one does not need to be pretty because you're using it to rim the glass. Yippee. We're going to take the salt. Take a small plate. I'm using just your regular saucer. Let's see. I'm using a regular saucer, but you can use... They sell things to, um, like, rim the glass. It'll be circular. Probably the salt, sugar will go around the circle. It feels frivolous. And again, we here at the company are very concerned with spending the least amount of money possible. You need to save up for a jetpack, for a zap gun. Don't buy a plate, especially for rimming glasses. Use a sauce. All right. This is a beer glass, but don't worry about that. That's not important right now. You want to press down a little bit just so you get like a nice froth to it. Again, that depends on the type of shaker cup that you're using. I'm going to pour all that remainder right back in there. So we've got ice, we've got jalapeno slices. You can add more slices as garnish so we can... Take a nice slice of jalapeno, cut a little bit right there, just to make it go on the edge of the glass nice and easily. Oop. We can do that. We can do a traditional lime wedge as well. Here we go, if I don't squish my lime completely. I like to make a little cut in it just because it's easier to get on the edge of the glass. Not my prettiest lime in the world. Not my prettiest. Now you can put this in a margarita glass. You could put it in any kind of cup shaped flask thing that you salvage, but I've got it in an old beer glass because it's pretty and got a nice wide bowl. There you are. There's your jalapeno margarita. Ooh, yeah, that's got a cake. really salty. <laughs> you can also do that with a spicy salt. You could do it with a less coarse salt if you don't want such a salty taste every time you take a sip. You can throw a straw in there. Personally, I like to get the taste of the rim around it. But if you don't want that, if you just want that as garnish, throw a straw in there. Don't even worry about it. I don't know about you guys, but whenever I'm collecting loot from one of the foresty planets, such as Bao and March, I feel like sprinting through all that quicksand and dodging collapsing bridges really gets me in a sweet mood. Something about the forest reminds me of fresh berries, so you might notice we've got some fresh berries here for this one. We're gonna go full on sweet for this one. We're gonna first start with a berry syrup. Now I'm gonna show you real quick how to make this. All right, we're gonna start off by putting our burner on nice medium heat, then adding two cups of frozen berries to our saucepan. The berries can be any kind of mix. Then we're gonna add one cup of water here. I like to keep my ratios really even, so it's two cups, one cup, one cup. Um, that's two cups of frozen berries, one cup water, one cup sugar. You'll see that coming up in a moment. Now, as your berries start to heat up, just keep stirring them. Mush your berries down as they start to break open and release their juices and sugars, just to keep the process going. We're going to really want a whole bunch of juice, sugars, and everything from them as much as we can get because we're going to filter out all of the berries themselves. All right, we're going to add our sugar as they start to get going. That'll mix in nicely and really get the mixture going. It'll also thicken things up a lot, so it's going to get that syrupy texture that we're looking for. We don't want it too thick, though. If you wanted a thicker syrup, just use less water. You could use like half a cup of water, probably, and get it more 
thick. That would be if you were putting it on like pancakes. So to balance out our flavors here, we're gonna add one lemon. Uh, I'm not gonna squeeze the whole lemon on camera, but you'll see what I mean. Mmm, simmering ASMR. For your berries, I used a couple different mixes of frozen berries. In total, I had blackberries, raspberries, cherries, strawberry, blueberry, and bits of pomegranate. Uh, it was very tasty. In fact, you could add palm juice to this, probably have a really great time. This to say you don't need that many different types of berries, but anything with some of those, you could just do blueberry, strawberry, raspberry. We're going to filter it out here. If you have a small strainer like me, you're just going to do it in small bits, but if you have a bigger one, obviously you can do more at a time. You can also use a spoon to press things down as you go. I had a second bowl available to put my extra berries in. If you were using this syrup on like pancakes or a waffle, you would leave the berries in and it would be an amazing like compote. Be really tasty, actually. Now, I don't show this part on camera, but when you're done straining everything, I want you to pop that in the fridge, let it cool off for a while. You can do 10 minutes, you can do a lot longer. It doesn't need to get that cool because we are gonna end up shaking this in a glass with ice, but you want it kind of cooled off so it's not still like steaming hot. I also double filtered this. If you see in that bowl, there's still extra syrup off on the side. Um, you can see on the edges and things. So I took all of that and put it back through again just to make sure I got as much juice out as possible. If you want a lot more, go ahead and double the recipe. Uh, as it is right now, we're making two servings with it. So if you wanna be able to make more servings with it, boost that up to four cups of um, berries, two cups water, two cups sugar. It's a lot of sugar. All right, so we've got our syrup we're gonna pour one ounce first. It's going to be two ounces total. One ounce. Two ounce. Now the amount of syrup that you made can comfortably make two of these drinks. So one for you, one for a bestie. I'm sorry, one for a comrade. <laughs> one for a comrade. A co-worker, even. A company co-worker. Share with your co-workers. Okay. All right, so we've got the two ounces. I know I say I like to put in the alcohol first, but the syrup looks so good going in. So we did that. We're gonna do this, something special. This is the organic maple syrup liqueur from Cathedral Ledge Distillery in New Hampshire. If you are ever off of all these moons and away from the company, around North Conway, New Hampshire, Definitely go check them out. I'm gonna put a splash more of that in. Boop. <laughs> I'm using the ounce measure for you guys. When I make anything on my own, just count one, two. That's a pour. That is a standard pour. I've actually got these nice little pour spouts I could be using, but they're so finicky. We're also gonna use tequila reposado. Now, for a margarita, we use tequila blanco. It's got a clean flavor. It's, I don't want to say tasteless, but much closer to it. Uh, but with that tequila kick, to make you party hard for the company. Don't forget your dancey mode. Anyway, tequila reposado is aged longer. It's got more flavor, and I like using it for things like this, where I kind of like having that dark flavor against the dark berries. No, I didn't pour it yet. Doubted myself for a second there, though. Do -do 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 -do. All right, so we've got maple liqueur, we've got tequila reposado, we've got our syrup. We're gonna throw in juice from just one lime. We don't need it nearly as limey as the margarita was. So no need for that. This is gonna be a much sweeter drink than the last one. The last one wanted a nice spice, a nice kick. This one, we want something sweet. We wanna feel like we're in the woods on a humid day, hopefully not too foggy, so you see the giants coming. They like to sneak up on you. 
not, not the nicest line here. Does not want to squeeze for me. Squeeze! This is showing how weak my grip strength is. For the company, you should train your strength. You're going to be carrying those engines, gold bars if you're lucky. You don't want to be just carrying a toy, some chattering teeth. No, you need to work hard for the company. All right? Work out a little. 92 pounds some days. 92. You're going to make the bridge fall in. On Val, I mean. All right, we've got our lime nice and juiced. Again, we don't want this too limey. The lime is acting there as a bit of a sour counterbalance, similar to how the syrup was. Um, and especially since the syrup has lime in it, you don't want to go overboard here. All right, so we got everything. We're gonna add a whole bunch of ice. You too can use a Guinness glass as transport if you keep them frozen, as I do. Guinness is best warm, but, ooh! Guinness is best warm, but sometimes you live with somebody who drinks all of their beer cold. All right, part of the point here is you wanna aerate it and you also wanna get it, you know, that frothiness is so delightful and the aerating also goes a long way here. Now, before we put, got water in it. Before we put our drink in our glass, we're gonna do a rim on this one as well. We're gonna do a sugar rim this time. Now, I've already poured it, mostly because I just tested this drink earlier. Wanted to make sure I had it down. That's our perfume salvage here. Making the whole place smell like roses. Here we go. Hold on, it smells nice. Right in my face. How nice. All right, we're gonna cut our lime here just to get a wedge going on. Now, sometimes when you've got these, you wanna cut off the ends of your lime. Can you guys see that? You wanna cut off the ends of your lime sometimes. It just looks kinda nice on the drink. You don't have to. I just do it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and give this a rim. So the lime juice is a good taste and it's also nice and sticky for rimming your glass. I've got a plate of sugar down here, you guys can't see it. Again, the company doesn't pay for an overhead camera. Those things are tough to rig. Having rigged one. Ooh, we got it really sugary. Wow, just the way I like it. I'm the big sugar rim gal. What can I say? All right. Strain this puppy right in. You can also do this drink as a smoothie. Do all the same stuff, but instead of making a syrup with the berries, throw that in a blender, pulverize the seeds so you don't taste those. You have yourself a nice beverage. Let's put a little ice in, not too much, just a couple there, because I'm gonna take a whole bunch of these fresh berries. You can skewer these if you'd rather. I don't like to. I like how they look floating around. It makes it look nice and full, like you're drinking a sangria. Of course, some people skewer for sangria. I like the huge punch bowl look. What can I say? Now, if you salvage some skewers, now we're talking, let's throw this huge strawberry in there. Do you guys see how big that is? Ooh. All right. We're also gonna throw a lime wedge on. Again, I cut right, right through it, right there. Let's do this. I cut right through. I dropped my lime on the floor. No. <laughs> Sit it right there on the rim of the glass. I see some people doing it without by force of will. I don't do with force of will. Will, I don't do force of will. I stick it on the glass easy. And there we have it. A 
All right. Don't mess up your company clothes. All right, and there we have our drink, guys. My strawberries in the way of getting a good sip. That actually looks so super cute. I'm gonna get a shot. Gosh, that's so sweet. Great, great asset to the company. Asset. Great, great, great. Now, last but certainly not least, you've been collecting so much expensive, worthwhile loot from Rend, Dine, and Titan. But you're cold. The snowstorms have been blowing past you, and you want to cozy up with a warm drink. We've got you covered. Now find one of those mugs that you've certainly collected as salvage. This one's white, but I think normally they're purple. Next, you're gonna want some hot water. You're gonna want some hot water. We're gonna do, ooh, I got lemons in the way. Lemons. You're gonna want lemons. We're gonna make a hot toddy. Ooh, I don't think this wants to do this. It's okay. We're gonna do one cup hot water to start. Eyeball your mug. What can your mug take? My mug can take some more. Gonna do a cup and a half. That is not gonna last. Return your kettle to the salvage pile as you're going to want to sell that once you land back at the company. Collect a new kettle, heat it up for your next hot toddy. So for mine, I've got a cup and a half of hot water. For a different mug, you might just do a cup, so less than the amount of the next ingredients you're gonna use. For this big mug though, I like to go pretty hard. We are gonna use whiskey. Hot toddies are a classic whiskey drink. I do the hot water here first because I want everything to kind of dissolve into the boiling water. If I pour the other ingredients first, I don't know, it'd probably be the same, but it's just how I like to do it for this drink specifically. Again, most drinks I do the alcohol first and then follow up with the other ingredients anyway. We're using whiskey from Copper Fox. This is their uh, single malt. Really great distillery I went to in Virginia just recently, highly recommend. They actually did a hot toddy there. I got an idea from them. So for this, because I've got a big mug, I'm gonna do one ounce, two ounces total of whiskey. Really warm you up. A hot toddy is medicinal in a way. The whiskey, the lemon, the honey, are all going to burn any mucus out of your throat and then coat it with honey. It's amazing what it does. Ooh, there we go. We're gonna follow that up with our lemon juice. I am going to do juice from two lemons. If you're working with a smaller mug, you can do just one lemon. I like to use a lot of lemon because I wanna get past the water. I feel like the water, it literally waters it down a whole bunch. Open up. Open up! Water waters it down. And other classic phrases from Jakuk. That just went over the side. Okay. Wow, that lemon juice excellently. I have quite the pile of lemons and limes going on. You have no idea. Maybe you do. Just count the videos. And half a jalapeno. Uncut. No, cut. Definitely cut. Chop the tip right off. Ooh, that is not how that works. Do not chop the tip right off of other things. Of jalapenos, it's fine. There's our first. Lemon number two. Now, if you want to save on your fruits for this, one, again, you can get just a thing of lemon juice. Or, I'm using the whole lemon here. Cut off your garnish wedge early and use, like, a lemon and three quarters of a lemon. You don't have to use exactly two lemons. The nice thing with 
mixing drinks is while it's all very technical and mathematic, you don't have to taste the drink at all to make a good drink. It also means you can kind of switch around the exact measurements that you use and you're still going to get a pretty tasty beverage every time. So if I take a wedge out of a, lim out of a lemon, it's going to taste pretty much the same. You're not going to notice a difference really. So if you don't want to use a whole third lemon to get a garnish wedge, you don't have to. But if that's the case, this is why you read your lab instructions before doing the lab. If you want to use a single wedge from a lemon before juicing the rest of the lemon, do this part first. We are going to press, where are my cloves? Where are they? Where did I put them? Ah, cloves. <laughs> we got this, we're doing it. You're gonna want whole cloves. Now this is what I saw at Copper Fox's distillery. I went there for a tasting and also got a hot toddy because it was a very cold winter day. They pressed the cloves into the lemon, which I love. Pressing cloves into oranges is a very traditional way of holiday decoration, of scenting a home. Uh, you would see them on Christmas trees or on mantles. Putting cloves in an apple is a great way to get stink out of a location. Uh, I had a friend who, after having a cigar night with his buds, did that to pull the smell of cigar and all the smoke out of the place. For like a couple days, he left a bunch of apples with cloves around and it pulled all the smell right out. Point is, is that the cloves are going to open up the lemon a little bit. But if your lemon's a little squishy, like mine is, which is great, fine. It also means if you cut it and then try to press the cloves in, it doesn't work very well. So start while the lemon's all together and then cut into it. it. Takes a lot of force to push cloves into a fruit. Okay. The cloves break a little, but it is well worth it. This one really doesn't want to go in. Bugger that one. I can feel the lime juice coming out of this. All right, it's too squishy on that part of the lemon. I'm gonna break it open with a knife and stick it in. Don't do what I'm doing. Don't do it, don't do it. All right, so we're gonna press that final clove in there. Now you could do three cloves, you could do five cloves. I've got about five cloves going on here. Let's show you guys this. Can you guys see? I did not do a super straight line, but we've got that going on. We're gonna cut a wedge right around this. There's lime juice on everything. Other hot toddy recipes will tell you to put the lemon wedge on the side of the drink. Because we've done the thing with the cloves, we're going to drop it wholesale into it. But again, we're waiting. I'm showing you guys this now because we're doing all the lemon stuff now. All right, put that to the side. Or don't. I, I'm not in charge of you. I am in charge of you. The company pays you. The last thing going in our drink before we garnish is honey. Now, I like a lot of honey. If you're wondering where to get honey, easy. When you stop off at one of those cheap planets, get a hive. Do it. Be brave. You'll only get a little stung. Be brave. Or you can buy honey from a local uh, source, a local market, farmer's market. I am using raw local honey from Lighthouse Keeper's Pantry. This, as far as I could tell, was the only truly local honey. A lot of honey will say it's organic, or it'll say it's local, but then you see it's from Argentina, which is awesome. Or it's from Appalachia. I don't live in Appalachia currently. It'll say it's from elsewhere in the United States. It'll say it's from a cool location. That's awesome if that's what you want to get. I like to get local honey because it can help uh, get you accustomed to local pollens and get you a little bit acclimated for allergens. I have a lot of allergies and I'm new to this location, so... Now I've got a honey stick here, so I'm gonna go buy spoonfuls of honey. This is probably about a teaspoon per thing, uh, per little honey stick that I'm doing here. A honey stick is much easier to get out from a jar. Uh, you can also see it called a honey comb. I'm calling mine a honey stick because it's not comb shaped. If it was comb shaped, we'd have a different conversation entirely. 
Now again, I like a lot of honey, so I'm gonna do three of these. I'm not getting a ton of honey on this, and I've also got a big mug. It takes a while to stir in the honey, just because it's all over your spoon. Honey's a pretty slow guy. But this is why I like to put in the hot water first, because I want everything in here by the time the honey gets in. Because honey tends to coat everything in a drink. I like Lighthouse Keepers because I can see that their hive is literally right behind their store. I know it's not saying it's local honey, but actually it's from across the state. And while that's great for some people, again, I'm going for something incredibly close by to help me get accustomed to local pollens. If that's an old wives tale, I apologize. I apologize. All right, lastly, we're gonna do our garnishes. We've got already in here, we've got our whiskey, we've got our hot water from our hot water kettle. Um, don't microwave your hot water. It doesn't get as hot. I don't know, it just feels wrong. Like it doesn't hit boiling in quite the right way. I think because microwaves cook water differently. Anyway, <laughs> that might be totally made up, but I always feel like it tastes different. My tea doesn't taste quite right. So I like to boil my water. Use your Keurig, I don't care. I'm not a cop. We're gonna throw in as a garnish. What? This has a cap on it. Broke that. Now we're gonna throw it as a garnish, a single cinnamon stick. You can do more, but it's mostly a garnish. It will spice it a little bit and you do want that. I don't like pouring straight cinnamon, uh, ground cinnamon on top. I like doing the stick. I don't like in drinks. If it doesn't have a lot of froth, I don't like to put spices on the top because I feel like they sit on the top and too much of it can taste kind of grainy. If you're doing something that's got an egg white to it, different conversation entirely. Now that lemon wedge we put aside with our cloves in it, it's gonna go in as well. Give it a final little stir around, but otherwise you have your hot toddy, a nice warm beverage to keep you going through cold days here waiting for dogs to come eat you. Or maybe a mimic to follow your teammates out of the mansion. And... It's really hot. Yeah, lemony, how I like it. If you don't like it super lemony, to hone down the amount of lemon, I'm using a lot of lemon because I love lemon juice. I really do. It's a problem. You could put in just one lemon if you want a really subtle taste and you want the whiskey to pop out more. I like having a nice balance of sour to whiskey to sweet where it's all going on at once. But again, do it to how big your lemon is, how small your lemon is. If you're using lemon juice, think of each lemon as roughly a tablespoon of juice. That'll help get you to about the correct proportions, maybe a little bit over. I am so warm. This is so warm. Now, the company thanks you for your hard work and your service. It reminds you to, of course, only indulge after collecting all of your scrap, perhaps waiting on your teammates to die or get back to you. You'll see. Coworkers can be so lazy, paranoid. Who knows? While you're waiting around on them, enjoy a nice hot toddy. Enjoy... I didn't name that one. Remember to subscribe for more of these. And we will see you later. Bye! Alright, so we've got our fruit syrup here. We're gonna pour... Oh, let's get our guy. We're gonna pour two ounces of this. Into... Ooh. Nope. Balls that right up. And the company put this on the bloopers. Just go and like it on the way back upstairs again. Alright, now I have slightly buried.